What's going on all my toy collectors and DC fans out there? You know who it is. It's your boy Ox and welcome to the Cave of Wonders. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Wave 7 of the DC Superpowers line by McFarlane Toys. This wave consists of six different figures and three different vehicles. We're going to be taking a look at Kilowog, Batman, Gold Suit Superman, Brainiac, Blue Beetle, and Sinistro in his yellow suit. And we're also going to be taking a look at the three different vehicles in this line, which is Blue Beetle's Bug Ship, Brainiac's Skull Ship, and the McFarlane Toy Store exclusive gold label Brainiac with Skull Ship. Now you're only able to get this vehicle right here if you were able to order it from the McFarlane Toy Store website, okay? Other than that, let's go ahead and get into this review, guys. Okay, now let's start off Wave 7 by taking a look at Batman first. And why, you ask? It's simple. It's because he's Batman. He's that guy. Now this right here is a gray suited Batman. Obviously there's a bunch of different Batman variants in the superpowers line, but I really like the way this one looks. And this is the only Batman that's in this, uh, in this wave seven, actually taking a look at the front of the box. You guys can see a superpowers logo right there. You can see it says DC up top for ages 12 and up, which I don't understand why. Cause littler kids can play with this toy. It doesn't have any kind of sharp, uh, um, sharp edges or nothing like that it's made by mcfarland toys and then you guys can see a clear package window showing you the figure that's inside and as you guys can see it doesn't come with any kind of uh batarang or grappling gun or any kind of extra accessories all right i've already measured the box up for you guys it's seven inches long by nine and a half inches tall by two inches in depth that's how much shelf space you're going to need if you're going to be displaying him in the box and there he is right there, just like this little image right here. You guys can see he has that light gray um, kind of pow uh, powder coated suit on with the darker gray trunks and back collar and everything like that. You can see some of the other uh, characters that are going to be in wave seven right here that we're going to be taking a look at. Ones from past waves right here. The vehicles. These are two of the vehicles that are actually in wave seven. And then a little read up on Batman in case you guys need it, okay? There's the barcode in case you guys need it. You guys can go ahead and pause it. Other than that, let's go ahead and crack Batman out of the box. Now here's Batman out of the box. You guys can see he doesn't come with any kind of weapons or accessories or anything like that. And you guys can also see that his hands are not open palm gripping hands. So he can't grip anything at all. If you guys had any extra weapons laying around, you guys can't end up sliding anything into his hand because as you guys can see, they're both closed, okay? Now this is an awesome looking figure. I actually really like this. Is so, this so far is actually my favorite Batman that McFarlane has came out with for the Superpowers collection. I love the light, the light powder gray. I love the even the dark powdery gray right here on his boots and on his hands. I love the fact that his eyes are painted white, and you guys can see the little like eyebrows are white as well. The fact that the front of his face, you know, has that black paint, and then the rest of his collar is gray. I think that's pretty dope. I love the fact that these figures, uh, you know, come with these little cloth capes right here. Reminds me a lot of the old Kenner figures as well. Now, I'm not going to go over all the articulation for each one of these figures because it's all the same. Seven points of articulation. The head does rotate around. It doesn't go up, doesn't go down. The arms do come up this way, but they don't bend at the elbow. They don't pull out or anything like that. The waist doesn't move. He doesn't bend forward or anything like that. His legs don't kick out, but they do kick up if you need them to. And they do bend right here at the knee. Doesn't have any kind of foot pivot or toe articulation or anything like that. Like that so like i said all these figures are going to have the same articulation uh but some of them are going to come with accessories and some won't but yeah i love the way this looks even the little belt you can see all the little pouches right there and you can see that it's not a bright yellow like his uh symbol right there it's like a powdery yellow so i, I love the way this figure looks this this right, right here so far is my favorite batman that they've came out with i just love the way it looks so far but let's move on to the next one all right, now up next, we got my boy Kilowog. You guys can see it has the same packaging, Superpowers logo, made by McFarlane Toys, clear package window showing you Kilowog inside. You guys can see it doesn't come with any kind of lantern or any kind of extra accessories, all right? Taking a look at him inside. I love the fact that McFarlane is making... Uh, characters that weren't made for the old superpowers line that weren't in that old superpowers cartoon in the first place the fact that he's adding these characters especially for people i was born in 86 so i missed out on uh a lot of these figures that had came out back in the day and i also missed out on a lot of the episodes because i was just catching reruns of what was coming on tv but the fact that a lot of people still have the old superpowers line and they can add to that by adding these new characters that mcfarland is coming out with is a really cool idea Taking a look at the back of the box, the same that was on that Batman figure we just looked at. You guys can see some of the other characters that from previous waves and characters that are in this wave right here. You guys can see the vehicles, little read up on Kilowog right there. You guys need to. There's the barcode. Let's crack him out of the box. 
All right, here's Kilowog out of the box. You guys can see that he doesn't come with any kind of weapons or accessories. He's one of the only lanterns so far out of the Superpowers line that didn't come with a little Green Lantern or whatever. But uh, obviously, you guys can see that he doesn't have any kind of hands that are going to be able to grip anything like that. But he does come with his little green ring right there. And this is actually the biggest figure I have in the Superpowers line, at least out of this wave. I'm not sure if that dark side figure that came out in the first wave of Superpower figures is bigger than this one or not, because I actually didn't collect that figure. I didn't like the way that dark side looked personally, um, but I might go back and buy it now. I just didn't know how far this line was going to go before I started investing in it, because I invested in the, in the DC Spin Master, you know, um, uh, superheroes line that they came out with and then they just stopped making uh stopped making figures all there is is repaints for that so i get tired of investing in lines that end up coming to a halt and stopping so i'm really excited that mcfarland is going full throttle with these figures okay now he's actually pretty tall he measures out to five and three fourths so he's actually bigger than most of the other figures this right here is the five inch batman right here sorry he's hooked to my tape measure Here's a five inch Batman so you guys can get a look at exactly how tall Kilowog is compared to uh, the five inch figures right there. And he's good because he's meant to be tall, all right? Now taking a look at him up close, awesome detail sculpting on his face right there. That's something that I really like with these little $9 figures is that they do a lot of detail, a lot of texture in the face. A lot of it is reused with the body and everything like that, but... um. But, you know, for a $10 figure, you really can't complain too much. I love the fact that there's a shiny gloss on the green right here on his chest. But the green here and here and even on his boots is a flat green. Same with his hands. And then there's like a glossy black right there. All right. All the same articulation as all the other figures. Yep. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Nice add to this line right here. And you can put them with your other uh, Green Lantern figures if you guys want. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Up next is the one and only Brainiac right here. I'm really happy to actually get this figure uh, because before I started collecting these superpower figures that McFarlane had came out with, I was collecting the four inch Spin Master figures. And I remember when Spin Master and McFarlane both got the license, the DC license back in uh, early 2020. Um, uh, Spin Master had released images from a toy show or it was I think Comic-Con or something like that and uh, it had showed a whole bunch of different figures that Spin Master was coming out with and one of them was Brainiac so if you guys collect Spin Master figures you'll remember that they uh, they showed off a Brainiac figure but they still never released it now it's 2024 they never released that Spin Master Brainiac figure so I'm really excited that they ended up coming out with this one right here for the Superpowers line now all the same packaging all the same dimensions and everything like that same Super Powers logo, McFarlane Toys. Let's go ahead and take a look up close. Check it out. Awesome looking figure. Now, I know there was a Brainiac figure in the old Superpowers line, but I think he kind of looked like a robot, if I remember. I think he was like uh, aluminum, like had like that uh, um, shiny aluminum uh, plastic body, if I remember. But like I said, I didn't watch every episode. I've never even seen Brainiac in the Superpowers uh, old cartoon from back in the day. Because like I said, I was born in between. I was born in 86. So by the time I was like really watching cartoons, it was like 88, 89. And by that time, Ninja Turtles had took over. And um, I was addicted to Batman at that time from the Michael Keaton Batman. Take a look at the back of the box. You guys can get a little read up on Brainiac if you guys need to. More images of past waves of characters that came out. The vehicles we'll be taking a look at later. Right there's the barcode. Let's go ahead and crack Brainiac out of the box. Now here's Brainiac out of the box. You guys can see he doesn't come with any kind of weapons or accessories. He has the closed plastic hand, so you can't fit nothing inside of his hands right there, which I'm not sure because he's supposed to go inside that Brainiac ship. So uh, I don't know if there's any kind of controls that he's supposed to be able to hold or anything like that. Uh, but I don't see him being able to, obviously, because his hands are, uh, are just fisted hands right there, all right? Now, I've already measured this figure out for you. He measured out to four and three quarters, so he's a bit smaller than your typical five-inch superpowers figures. I just wanted to let you guys know exactly what that's going to look like. I don't know if he's meant to be short or not. Now, I know the original superpowers figure is uh, was like a chromed-out robot. I don't know if he was uh, Brainiac was like that in the superpowers cartoon if he was like look like this or if he looked like that robot or not but i know that brainiacs went by different versions depending on the comic line you're going to be reading my first introduction to brainiac wasn't even looking like this it wasn't even from the 90s my first introduction to brainiac was from the tv show smallville shout out to any of my fans out there the smallville um you know smallville fans who grew up on that show i really love that show smallville but that was my first introduction to brainiac okay but yeah, awesome looking figure, all the same articulation. You guys can see he has um, 
the pink shirt on with the white collar, the white little belt right here, white gauntlets, green skin, great detail, great paintwork on his head, even his little cheekbones and everything like that, the way he looks. Like I said, this is an awesome looking figure. Love the way it looks. Um, and at the end of the review, I'll compare the gold label Brainiac figure that was from the McFarland Toy Store. I'll compare that to this one as well, okay? All right, now moving forward, my boy Sinistro right here. This is actually the second Sinistro figure that McFarlane has dropped for the Superpowers line. The first one was his more accurate outfit that he had when he was in the Superpowers TV show. But this is how I know Sinistro growing up. This is what my introduction to Sinistro was, him, absor him absorbing the, uh, the fear energy or whatever. And this is how I remember him looking personally right here. All the same packaging, uh, dimension size packaging and everything like that. Taking a look at the back of the box. You guys can see a little read up on Sinistro right there if you guys need it. The barcode, some of the other figures in this line, including the vehicles right here. Let's go ahead and crack Sinistro out of the box. Now here's Sinestro out of the box. You guys can see he does come with his little uh, yellow lantern right here. And he does have an open hand on his right hand right there where you guys can fit this into. Most of the lantern figures that are in the superpowers line all come with the little lantern besides that kilowog figure that we already looked at he didn't end up coming with a lantern and you can't even use an extra lantern to fit into his hand because he has closed fisted hands okay but now this is the second uh sinistro figure that mcfarland has dropped for the superpowers line the first one was this one right here and i know this is probably how he looked in the original superpowers cartoon tv show um but I grew up with Sinistro looking like this in this yellow suit. So this was my first introduction to him. And I'm sure, like I said, to the original Superpowers collectors and the people who are huge fans of that old cartoon, I'm sure this right here is how he used to look back in the day. So I'm sure you guys are really excited to have this one. But for me, I'm really excited to get this one because this this was my introduction to Sinistro right here. You guys can see he has like that uh, metallic chrome looking... Um, uh, yellow paint on him right here so that's going to make him pop on your guys' shelf lots of detail in his face i don't see any kind of paint uh, issues with his little mustache or his eyebrows or eyes or anything like that yeah i like the way this figure looks and like i said you guys can fit this into his hand now he's going to measure out to five inches so he's about the same size as this batman that we looked at earlier so he's a little bit taller but yeah pretty cool looking figure let's move on to the next one all right, now moving on to my boy Blue Beetle right here. Now, I'm not sure what Blue Beetle this is. I don't know if it's the original one, Dan, or if this is Ted Cord. My first introduction to Blue Beetle growing up in the 90s was uh, Ted Cord. So uh, I'm not too familiar with the original Blue Beetle who discovered the Scarab, but... Uh, but my, my original Blue Beetle was Ted Cord. But if you guys know what Blue Beetle this is, let me know down in the comments below, okay? All the same packaging, all the same dimensions. Taking a look up close, you can see that this figure doesn't come with any kind of weapons or accessories. A little read up on Blue Beetle right here. It says, archaeologist Dan Garrett discovered an ancient scarab. Yeah, see, but I, I just wasn't, I didn't, I, I didn't know about him. You know what I mean? Like I knew that there was another guy before, um, uh, Ted, uh, Ted Cord. I knew that there's another guy before him, but I'm not too familiar with him. But right there's the barcode in case you guys need it. Let's go ahead and crack Blue Beetle out of the box. Okay, now here's my boy Blue Beetle out of the box. You guys can see he doesn't have any kind of weapons or accessories, even though he does have two open hands right here. I'm going to guess these hands are for holding the control modules in that, uh, in that bug ship that we're going to be looking at towards the end of the review that came out in this wave seven. So I'll, I'll, I'll be showing him with that bug ship and we'll see if he does have something that he holds inside of there. I know he's probably going to be able to hold that zip line at the bottom that ends up coming out of that bug ship. So that's probably why he has two open hands. All right. And this figure actually measured out to four and three quarters. So he's a little bit shorter. So he's going to stand at the same height as that Brainiac figure, but a little bit shorter than uh, like Batman right here who ended up measuring out to five inches. Okay. Now take a look at them up close. I love the fact that there's obviously two different blues because Blue Beetle, that's why it's called the Blue Beetle. But you can see that um, there's more of a, a, a glossy light blue and then all this other blue right here on his shorts, on his gauntlets and boots. It's like a flat blue right there. And then there's this 
you know black line showing off the beetle on his chest right there and that's nice and high gloss and that separates the two blues because sometimes when you get a character that has so many of the same colors on him it kind of looks funny but this figure does look really cool i'm really geeked to add blue beetle to this uh superpowers wave now i did have an issue with this not tripping too much these are ten dollar figures but you guys can see that there's a lot of black all the way around this little yellow eye right there and there's hardly any black right around here and there's some blue fading in right there so uh it does make it look kind of silly if you you guys can see right there see how a lot lot more black paint underneath there not tripping for the price of the figure but if i do come across this figure at walmart i might just go ahead and buy me another one if uh if i can get one that doesn't have any kind of paint defects but nothing too big i'm not going to send this back to mcfarland like man look at this ten dollar figure look what happened but um you know for a lot of you uh like I said, I know there's a lot of perfectionists out there who who love this line to death and, and they're geeked to, to have it come back out. Uh, so, But just make sure you guys pay attention to that. If that's something that's going to bother you, you make sure you guys speak up and say something about it, all right? But yeah, awesome looking figure. I'll show him inside that bug ship at the end of the review. Let's go ahead and move on to the next figure. All right, now last figure in this wave, we got my boy... Okay, now last figure in this wave, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. This is Superman right here in his gold suit, red cape, red trunks, red shorts, and all the good stuff. All the same size packaging, Superpowers logo, you guys can see it says Superman up there. Taking a look at the back of the box, it gives you a little read up on my boy Clark Kent right there, the Man of Steel. Figures that you guys already know that are in this wave, some vehicles we'll be taking a look at next. Oh, and the barcode in case you guys need it. Other than that, let's crack my boy Superman out of the box now here's superman out of the box in his shiny 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 gold suit right here like i said this is a cool looking figure i'm not knocking it it's just uh i probably wouldn't have bought this if i didn't buy the whole wave at one time but uh, i know a lot of you guys like i said uh um, you know, like all these different variants. I'm just never been a huge fan of different variants. Uh, I'm cause I don't have a lot of room, man. I got a lot of toys down here in the cave, man. I can't have so many of the same mold of a figure just with different suits on. It'd be nice if it was a different mold, but a lot of these superpower figures, you know, all have the same mold and that's why they're so cheap. But taking a look at them up close, you guys can see there's no kind of paint defects in his face at all. Lots of, uh, lots of, Lots of structure. You guys can see his little cheekbone indents right there. You can see he has blue eyes. No issues with the paint on his hair or anything like that. You guys can see it does have this shiny gold suit, red trunks, yellow belt. It doesn't have any kind of gripping hands where you can hold anything. just has the fist punching hands. All the same articulations as all your other uh, superpower figures. And on the back, he does have that S on the back of his cape. Now, I see a lot of people complain about that on... Um, with the DC Multiverse figures that McFarlane also makes that they don't have the Superman logo. But you know what? I don't always want that Superman logo on the back of every single cape. On these figures, I'm fine with it, um, you know, because they're paying homage to an old 80s line. But uh, I don't want that Superman logo on every one of my capes, man, on my Superman figures. But yeah, man, awesome looking figure right here. Just wanted to show you guys what he looked like standing next to Batman too. He's actually just a tad bit taller than Batman right there. So maybe by like a 16th or something like that, not even a quarter or nothing, but he's a little bit taller than this five inch Batman right there, which is cool. Cause I, sometimes I kind of want my Superman to be bigger than Batman, even though the Ben Affleck Batman, when he went up against Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck was taller than Henry Cavill. But yeah, cool looking figure. Let's go ahead and move on to the vehicles. All right, now moving on to the vehicles in Wave 7. We're going to start off by taking a look at Brainiac's skull ship right here. This is his little high-tech spacecraft. Now, there was only two vehicles released in Wave 7, but there's actually three because one of them is just a repaint of this one, that gold label that you were only able to get off the McFarland Toy Store. It's the same... Um, uh, mold of this ship right here. It's just painted a different color and it comes with an exclusive Brainiac figure. Okay, guys, like I said, you're not going to be able to find that like you will the rest of these figures off Amazon or Big Bad Toy Store or at Walmart. That, that, uh, was a vehicle. I'll show you guys at the uh, towards the end of the review. That one you're only able to get off the McFarland Toy Store, okay? But starting off with this one right here, you guys can see Brainiac Skull Ship right there. Superpowers logo, DC McFarland Toys. I already measured the packaging out for you guys. It's six inches long by, um, or excuse me, nine inches long by six inches tall by four inches in depth. That's how much shelf space you're going to need if you're going to be displaying this in the box, okay? Taking a look at the side, same image as that was on the on the front. On the back right here, you can see it says Brainiac's high-tech spacecraft. Let you know that it does fit one figure. 
and also let you know that when you roll it, the legs are going to shake, rotate, or move, and we'll see that when I ended up opening out the box. But it doesn't have any kind of projectiles or missiles or anything like that. Just like most of the other uh, vehicles that McFarland has came out with the, for this line, most of them never have any kind of projectiles or anything like that. Let you know how to hook all these little pieces onto the main body of uh, Brainiac ship. There's the barcode. Let's go ahead and crack this baby out of the box. All right, now here's Brainiac Skull Ship out of the box. After I slid it out, it was sitting inside that little housing right there. The main body right here was slid inside there. And then uh, all eight of the legs were in one individual bag. And then the housing was also in another bag right there. So that's what to expect when you guys pull this out. It's just going to be two different little baggies. And they're going to be um, basically stuffed inside this little slip cover right here that fits inside that main box. All right, guys? Now there's eight different legs. And then there's the main housing right here. Each leg is labeled. So if you flip it upside down, you'll see it says L1. You got L1, L2, L3, and L4. And then on the other side, you have R1. You guys can see the R right there. And it'll say like R2, R3, and R4. And that lets you know where you connect these at, okay? So like um, L1 will connect right here on the bottom of the housing, and then it will go all the way around, okay? Now there's no directions inside the box, and that's because, remember when we looked at the outside of the box, uh, at the bottom of it, it gave you the directions right there. So as you guys can see, each leg is gonna be labeled on each side, and that lets you know we're just, uh, uh, just to slide those, uh, slide those into these little tiny pegs, which I'll show you guys on the bottom of the ship, okay? And that's pretty much it. And right here, that's what those are. So let's go ahead and start by sliding these on. And they just slip on just like this. You just, just push them on. You see those little clamps? Boom. Just like that. And don't look like they have any trouble pulling off in case you guys want to take this thing apart and store it later. But yep, you just go around and slide these on. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll show you guys what it looks like in a second, all right? And now there you have it. All eight legs are attached. Really easy. You just push them on. And like I said, I think if you want, you're, you can uh, pull them back off. If you guys want to put this back in the box and store it up or whatever, you guys can also do that if you guys want to, okay? Now, like I said, there's no kind of lights. There's no kind of... Um, was it rockets or any kind of projectiles or anything like that? No kind of sounds or nothing. But on the bottom, you guys do see that there is uh, three wheels right here. And those three wheels, what you do is you just roll it. And that's what causes the action feature, which is the legs to basically uh, look like this thing is crawling, okay? Now, I personally am probably going to have this thing hanging from one of my glass displays. I'll have like um, some string around it and have it hanging in the air. But uh, other than that, this is basically what the action feature is. Those legs just crawling back and forth, all right? Now, it does have one sticker. It's not a sticker that you're going to have to uh, attach. It was already attached when I pulled this thing out of the box. And you guys can see it's just like the control panel right there. And inside, all you guys can see is this little peg right there. And that's the peg that ends up hooking to the bottom of uh, Brainiac's foot, okay? Now, you guys can see that it also has like a translucent uh, plastic right here. meant to look like glass or something. But it has that translucent right there um, all the way around the way you guys can see. Now, these eyes right here don't look like stickers um, because I don't feel like they can be peeled off or anything like that. They might be stickers, but I don't know. Maybe it might be paint, but I, I can't really uh, get my fingernail in there to see if it's a sticker or not. But yeah, other than that, man, that's pretty much it for this uh, vehicle. I like the way it looks like it has little exhausts right here. But like I said, I'm not going to have this sitting on the ground. I'm actually going to have this floating in the air. Now, if you guys take that Brainiac figure, you guys can see that he does have little holes in the bottom of his feet. And you guys just slide this on there just like that. Mm, there you go. And you guys just have him standing up. So like I said, he's not going to be sitting down. There's no kind of chair in there. And, um, and that's basically how he's going to look when he's sitting inside this ship or standing inside this ship. All right. Let's just see real quick if I bend his legs, what he would look like if I decided to put a chair in there and had him sitting down just like this. Actually, let me see if I can grab a chair real quick. Okay, now here's this little chair right here that I use for some of my superpower figures. Let's see if I just sit this in here just like that. Like I said, it's just a little tiny chair. If I sit this in here, I wonder how I'd look if I went ahead and glued that in there, if I could sit him down in this. Like I said, this doesn't come with this vehicle. Let's just see what he looks like. There you go. So I guess if I had, if I decided to, I could mount a little chair in there and then have him sitting down if I wanted to. And that right there is how he'd end up looking inside of there. I could obviously just glue this, glue the bottom of that chair if I wanted to. But yeah, 
Right there is how the bug ship looks. And like I said, he is going to be standing. I just wanted to show you guys the chair, basically. But yeah, let's go ahead and move on to Blue Beetle's bug ship, all right? Moving on to the second vehicle on Wave 7, which is the one I'm most excited about, actually. The bug ship, basically Blue Beetle's aerial mobile headquarters. I'm really excited to get this vehicle, actually, because I had bought that uh blue beetle popcorn bucket that had came out I actually did a review on it i'll try to leave a link in the description below it was a popcorn bucket that had came out when that blue beetle movie had came out uh last year and uh i was going to change that into a uh a bug ship for my figures but uh it really geeked that this one ended up coming out so now i don't even have to do all that customization like i was planning on doing but front of the box, you guys can see it says superpowers right there. He's keeping, McFarlane always keeps it the same theme, making sure that this is uh, all the same packaging as the original superpowers line. McFarlane toys right there. You guys can see this really cool drawn comic image of the uh, bug ship right here. I've already measured the box up for you guys. It's 14 inches long by six and a half inches tall by four inches in depth. So that's how much shelf space you're going to need if you're going to be displaying this in the box. Okay. Right here is the same image that was on the back or on the front, I mean, right here, let you know that this uh, uh, ship does end up fitting two figures inside. And right there, you guys can actually see um, uh, Booster Gold right there. You guys see him right there. So I'm sure that that figure is going to be coming out pretty soon. It lets you know that it, uh, the wings do open and it does have a retractable sky wire. That way you guys can have him uh, dropping down out of the ship. Okay. On the bottom right here, let you know how to put this whole thing together, and we'll take a look at that once I pop it out of the box, okay? There's the barcode in case you guys need it. Let's go ahead and crack this baby out of the box. All right, now here's Blue Beetle's bug ship out of the box. As you guys can see, it comes with the main housing. It comes with six legs, and it comes with a little antenna right there. When I slid this out of the box, it was in a cardboard slip cover. All six of the legs and that little antenna were in one little packaging, and then the main housing was in another little plastic packaging right there. Just got to cut those open and slide them out, okay? Now, like I said, it does come with six legs. All these legs are exactly the same. Unlike Brainiac Skull Ship, they're not labeled, so it doesn't matter where you guys snap these on uh, because, you know, there's no specific place to snap these on, all right? And how you guys do that is right here on the bottom of the box. You guys can see right there it says six legs, and it shows you guys all six of those little slots right there that you push those legs into. And right up top, it shows you that you end up putting that antenna uh, right there on the top of the bug ship, all right? So that's what we're going to do real quick. Just grab it. You guys can see all six of those little holes right there. You, you guys can see the little um, little peg right here in the bottom of these. And then you just push these on, all right? Just like that. Okay, now here are all the legs attached. Like I said, it was really easy. You just you guys just go ahead and push those on just like that. And then you guys take this little antenna right here and you make, make sure it's facing forward. And you just snap that right on the top of there real quick. You see those little um, those little uh, openings, and then you just push it, push this on just like this. There you go. Yep, just like that. Pretty easy. And that's it. Like I said, no kind of projectiles, no kind of light sounds or anything like that that you end up having to attach, okay? Now, if you guys are looking at the legs, the legs do swivel if you guys need them to. They don't swivel like, like really easy. You just push them. You guys, they kind of like little clicks. So they just kind of click like that and you guys can uh, put them any way you want. Now, there's no kind of action feature like Brainiac Skull Ship where you slide it across the floor and the legs start moving or anything like that. There's no kind of action feature as far as the legs go, okay? Now, Taking a look at it, if you guys go to the back, there's a little button right here that you guys push. It's pretty cool because it says, I love New York right there. But if you guys push this little button right here, you guys are going to watch as it opens up. And this right here is where you're able to put uh, at, least two, at least two figures sitting down. But I'm sure you guys can fit other figures right here. And we'll take a look at that in a second, all right? Now, all the stickers are already put on this thing. You guys are not going to have like a sticker sheet to, uh, to have to try and fit your hands in here to put stickers down. Uh, all the stickers are already placed in there when you guys open this up out the box. And as you guys can see, those front little bug lenses right there are see-through. So you guys can see that it's uh, a orange when you're looking through there at anything that you're going to be looking at, okay? And yeah, check that out. Just like that. Yo. Now, this isn't an opening. This is just a sticker. But there is something on the bottom, an action feature, which I'll show you guys in one second. All right. But yep, that's how that looks. And if you guys want to close these, you just push it back down. And it just clicks just like that. All right. Now, on the bottom, 
you guys can see this little uh, opening right there on the on the inside you've seen a sticker but this right here is actually like the button that you push in order to work this little zip line right here so if you guys pull this out and you guys can see that it, it can click right in there in those little slots you guys can pull this down kind of just like the wonder woman jet on uh, wonder woman invisible um, uh, jet or whatever this thing pulls down and if you guys push this little button right here and end up shooting right back up really fast and if you guys want you guys can push that right in there and it'll hold it right there all right let's go ahead and measure this real quick before i put uh any kind of action figures inside of it it measures out to about 11 and a half inches long tallest part i would say is maybe four and a half about four and a half maybe five maybe about five inches tall and this widest part is obviously the legs. I'd say one foot, so 12 inches all the way across, right? So that's how much shelf space if you're gonna need, if you're gonna be displaying this outside with the characters around it and stuff like that, all right? Now let's go ahead and show some uh, 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 figures inside of it real quick, all right? Okay, now as you guys can see, I put Blue Beetle in there and I put that Batman that's in this wave as well. And what you do is you basically don't bend their knees. You just bend their legs up and you don't make sure you don't bend their, uh, bend their, bend anything at the knees. You just keep the legs out straight, okay? And as you guys can see, their legs stick out straight just like that, all right? And then you guys can just close it up. Just like that. And now you guys can see Blue Beetle and Batman inside of there. Now, what would actually be pretty cool if you guys have any kind of uh, LED lights or whatever, you guys can put LED lights, maybe attach them to a battery or something like that. And then you guys can have uh, the LED light shining, you know, and you guys can like maybe make these lenses shine out, you know, like shine like spotlights out or something if you guys want to. Right. But that right there is how it looks. Let's see if we can fit some other figures, which I'm sure we can. You can put some other figures back here if you want to. Yep. It does close if you guys need it to. Let's see if we can set them up. Yep, they set up too. I'm not sure if maybe putting a little chair in here. That The chair that I have will be too tall, but I'm sure if you guys uh, in some way can mount some flat chairs right back here, you guys could end up you know, closing that and adding, uh, adding two more seats if you guys wanted to, okay? Just wanted to make sure I showed you guys that. So this thing could have the potential of holding uh, four figures in here if you guys wanted to add two chairs. But you got to make sure the chairs are flat at the bottom. Unlike the chairs that I have where they have like a little base on the bottom right there. Maybe I might cut that off and put that in there. Who knows? But right now I'm just happy with the way it is. All right. Let's go ahead and show that little zip line real quick. Now here he is right here holding this little sky wire. You remember earlier when I showed you guys this figure out of the packaging, I said he had two open hands but didn't come with any accessories. That's so he is able to grab onto this little sky wire right here that hooks onto the bottom of the bug ship, all right? Now you guys pull that down, you guys can have him holding it and then if you guys want, you guys can have Batman, whoever's in there, um, act like they're just pushing this little button right here and that will cause him you know, to slide up and be, uh, you know, to, to basically slide up to the bug ship basically, just like that, all right? Yep. Yeah. Pretty cool bug shit, man. I'm really happy with the way this thing turned out. I was just using the old popcorn bucket that I ended up having uh, that came out during that Blue Beetle movie. But yeah, pretty awesome ship. Let's go ahead and move on to the last one. Okay, now last vehicle in this wave, we got Brainiac Skull Ship. Remember guys, this is a McFarlane Toy Store exclusive, so you're not going to find this at Amazon, on at, in Walmart, you're not going to find this on any other Toy Store website. This is the gold label collection Brainiac Skull Ship that you had to get when he announced Wave 7, uh, and you're only able to get it off the McFarlane Toy Store website, okay guys? As you guys can see, it's the same vehicle as the one we looked at earlier, besides the fact it is painted different and it is going to come with an exclusive figure, okay? So you're you're not missing out on too much unless you're a completist and you're a huge superpowers fan and you guys want every vehicle and every figure that came out in this line okay all the same dimensions nine inches long six inches tall by four inches in depth okay really cool image you guys can see brainiac right there inside the skull ship pointing his finger got the gold label collection right there same image on the side that you've seen on the front this this vehicle, like I said, is going to do the exact same thing. Only seats uh, one, doesn't even seat. I think he just stands up. Only stands one figure right there. Legs are going to rotate just like the other one. And on the bottom, it's going to let you know how to put this thing together. And there's the barcode for you, all right? Let's go ahead and crack this baby out of the box. 
Now here's the gold label Brainiac Skull Ship out of the box. You guys can see it comes with the housing, comes with eight different legs that you guys have to attach just like you did the original. And then it comes with this exclusive figure right here of Brainiac, okay? That Brainiac figure came inside this little plastic uh, uh, case right here inside the box. And just like the other Skull Ship, uh, there's a big piece of plastic that that housing came into. And then the legs came into their own little individual packaging as well, okay? Now this is gonna connect the same way as the other one did. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect it for you guys and then we'll take a look at it. And here it is with all the legs attached, just like the other one. Like I said, there's um, no extra action feature besides the same as the other skull ship. It's just going to roll right there across, and then the legs are going to shake just like the original one did, okay? Only difference is this one's painted a different color uh, rather than gray, and then you guys can see that it does come with this exclusive figure. Now, real quick before we look at the figure... We'll look over this one. You guys can see all the little black paint work right here that wasn't on the original one. And I'm going to hold that one up there. That way you guys can see it. You guys can see a lot of extra paint work. Also, this thing is obviously purple. Uh, instead of having like these blue tinted clear windows right there, this one has like these neon, uh, neon greenish yellow windows right there. And then even the eyes of the skull ship look different. You guys can see this one had little beady red eyes. This one right here is uh, painted right there black. And then, like I said, with the uh, with the yellow uh, with the yellowish green eyes right there. Okay. Same peg on the inside. Like I said, you don't have to uh, connect the sticker. The sticker's already connected. Now, before I put the figure in there, I just wanted to show you guys this Brainiac figure compared to the other Brainiac. You guys can see that this one right here has a mustache, has a beard. He doesn't have that little white X with the dot with the uh, red dots on the top of it. He has like this little metal uh, aluminum uh, cap right over the top of his head. You guys can see that he's painted all black with a silver belt, silver gauntlets compared to this one with the pink shirt. The trunks are painted black you guys can see more of his legs skin and his hands this one right here has gloves on and obviously he has a cape right here so yeah only thing difference is this exclusive figure which this figure does look pretty cool i think probably what i'm going to do is i'm going to end up using him as my main brainiac and then him as like a, a robot and maybe i might buy like another one of these and make it look like three ships are flying in him inside the main mother ship right here and then uh maybe have two of these floating off to the off in the distance if I could fit them in my display, in my glass display, okay? Let's go ahead and slide him in through them little pegs. Like I said, there's a little peg right there. And right there's how he looks. Let's put this one in there so I can show you guys what they look like standing next to each other. Just like that. Sorry, he's standing a little crooked. But yep, pretty much that's it. Like I said, no lights, no nothing like that, but it would be cool to maybe put some little uh, LEDs inside here, make this thing shine, make all the little green, you know, shine out the uh, the translucent window right there. That way, you know, it'll shine bright and green if you guys wanted to, okay? Let's go ahead and show this ship next to some other McFarland Superpower vehicles. Right here is Wonder Woman's Invisible Jet. And right here is Batman's Batwing right there. I just wanted to show you guys what they kind of look like next to each other. This isn't too big of a vehicle. It's pretty small, but um, it fits in well with the rest of the line that McFarland is doing with these vehicles. So obviously it isn't a huge ship. It's not going to fit a whole bunch of figures or nothing like that, but it, uh, you know, it, it, it does its purpose what it needs to. Now I didn't measure this out last time, so I'm going to go ahead and measure it out now. It did end up measuring out to eight and a half inches long to about three and a half inches tall right up here and the longest part of the legs on this side is about nine inches okay so about nine inches this way and you know all the other measurements that i just said basically but yeah that's how it looks i also want to show you guys that um blue beetle bug ship uh next to the popcorn bug ship uh, container that had came out. I think it was AMC or Cinemark, Cinemark bug ship. I'll leave a link to that description below if you guys decide you guys want to maybe get that bug ship uh, for Blue Beetle, but that one didn't come with seats or anything like that. It's meant to be a popcorn bucket, but I'll show you guys what it looks like real fast. All right, now here's the Superpowers bug ship right here by McFarlane, and this right here is the bug ship popcorn bucket. Like I said, I think, yeah, I got this from Cinemark right here. I ended up ordering it online. And like I said, this is just a popcorn bucket. This is meant to go with the Superpowers line right here. But as you guys can see, this one is smaller. The legs do move around if you guys need them to uh, all the way around. They don't move right here, but they do move, you know, if you guys need them to, you know, front or back or whatever. 
Now the popcorn bucket right here, obviously it stands taller. It's uh, it's wider. The legs do move, you know, in like that right here at this joint. So if you guys want to bend it like that, but it doesn't move forward. So you guys can't separate all three of these legs if you guys want to. Okay. As you guys can see, the lenses on this one are orange. This one right here is green. It does open up like this one does. You just push that button and you guys can see that it opens up and it has those seats in there. This one, on the other hand, you just open up by hand but the wings don't stay open okay now i have a little lanyard right there but uh as you guys can see there's no seats in there but you guys can put seats i was planning on putting seats in here but i'm probably not going to do it now who knows i still might because this one is bigger and it's uh it's gonna probably look a little silly with the um with the blue beetle superpowers figure right here because it is so much bigger but um i'm probably going to end up using this i mean you can still use it with it but um uh, I'm probably going to end up using this with the old Mattel Brave and the Bold Blue Beetle figure. And uh, I'll show you what he looks like standing next to it real quick, all right? And right there is a look at, like I said, this is the Mattel Blue Beetle figure for the Brave and the Bold cartoon. And this is the new Superpowers Blue Beetle by McFarlane. And like I said, that's why I'm probably just going to use this one. He's just a tad bit taller than that figure, but I'm probably going to use this bug ship for him. And I'll use the Superpowers one to display with all my Superpower figures. And I'll just keep this one for the Brave and the Bold one. Well, all right, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed that look at Wave 7 of the DC Superpowers line by McFarlane Toys. They came out with some really cool characters in this wave, and they gave us some really awesome vehicles right here. Like I said, if you guys weren't able to get this uh, gold label uh, Brainiac skull ship, don't trip on it. It's a really cool figure, yeah, but the vehicle itself is just the same as this one, just painted different, okay? But other than that, man, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Sorry it was so long. I just like to give you guys all the information you guys need on, on these vehicles and all the different comparisons you guys might want, all right? Until next time, stay cool.